Welcome to the Kara Michelle Show, where we break out of the matrix together and return heaven to earth. This is a place for the spiritual seekers and leaders, the dreamers and doers, the conscious creators and world changers. You can expect a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but mostly a whole lot of purpose, freedom, and sovereignty. And of course, all things quantum. May this podcast serve you in remembering the truth of who you are, all that you came here to do, and how deeply supported you are in doing it. You are incredibly powerful and your mission is protected. So it's time to dial up your frequency and recalibrate to your higher self and limitless potential. Get ready, because we're about to blast off. A new reality awaits you on the other side. I'll see you there. If you struggle at all with confidence, with loving who you are, looking in the mirror, being excited and lit up just by all that you are, and I'm not talking about strictly appearance, but like feeling confident in your skin and in your body, in your whole essence and being, I want to share some things that have really helped me because a lot of people look at where I am now and even I look at where I am now and I feel such a deep sense of love and gratitude and excitement for who I am and who I be. (laughs) And that wasn't always the case. And I want to share like the biggest tools that helped me break out of that and start to love who I am. Because, you know, I think Louise Hay said it best, and I butcher every single quote, so I'm not even going to try to directly quote her. But one of the things she often talked about was that it truly is just a lack of love on the planet that is causing all the problems. And when we look at confidence issues or things that are holding us back and keeping us from our purpose or from our next level, majority of the time it comes from a lack of love. Whether this was stemming from childhood and not receiving love in the way that we needed it as kids, not really feeling good enough or worthy or um, like our true authentic self was enough for our parents or our caregivers, or whether it came from all the societal conditionings, all the, yeah, massive brainwashing and programming that eventually became our own personal truth. And the thing is, is the more you get disconnected from love, the smaller you feel, the more helpless you feel, the less you radiate, the less you show up in the world because you are disconnected from your full power and from your true self. So today's episode is hopefully going to help you plug back in and start reconnecting to how freaking incredible you are in all the ways and why you're so worthy of not only the world's love, but your own love. And ultimately, it starts with you first. So let's focus on that. Now, I am standing here (laughs) recording this podcast. I've got my cool galaxy light and I'm standing staring at the mirror. And that is what prompted this topic today because the mirror used to be my worst enemy. And now it's probably like (laughs) super cheesy. It's like, it's my best friend. It's definitely not my best friend, but like I love the mirror now because of one of the most powerful tools in changing your self-image, your concept of yourself, and forcing you to change your self-talk from a place of negativity and judgment to compassion and love is using the mirror. Because I want you to think about this, how often do you see your reflection and immediately feel a negative emotion or think something judgmental? I know for myself, I used to literally frown every time I saw my reflection and I would get smaller, like my shoulders would kind of collapse inwards, I'd shrug forward, I would like scowl at myself and I couldn't think of a single positive thing that I liked about what I saw looking back at me. 
I just was full of insults and criticism and judgment and hate for the person I saw staring back at me. I felt that way towards every single part of my appearance. I could list off for you right now all the reasons why I think I'm wrong in how I look but I'll spare you the details, <laughs> but I still feel that if I allow myself to go there, I could easily do that, and I also could list off all the things I hate or judge or deem wrong or bad about how I show up in the world, who I am, what I have done, what I haven't achieved, like the judgment runs so deep. And that is part of our programming. Unfortunately, I think there's not a single person on the planet who hasn't struggled with that immensely in their life. And that to me, again, is a, a lack of love on the planet. And it's a programming issue. It's a software issue. <laughs> it's a software issue, my friend. So like, let's fix the software. So this is all through our subconscious beliefs. Obviously, other tools. I mean, I love my hypnosis work. That's been incredibly powerful at helping me shift and reframe where there's smallness and judgment and start to bring in my higher self, bring in a connection to God, bring in a level of unconditional love and um, healing to those fragmented parts of myself or those memories or those, yeah, things that I deem unworthy. But the mirror specifically was one of the first and most transformational tools when I was specifically working on confidence and insecurities and body image and changing the self-talk, changing the dialogue. So when you look in the mirror, if your initial reaction is something neg negative or judgmental, this is the perfect opportunity to use that as a trigger moment. I like to think of them as like the little catalyst, the little turning point, the things that you do in your daily life that are already habitual, we want to start to shift those from a negative track to a positive track. So the second you bring awareness to this specifically with the mirror, <laughs> you're going to realize that you actually see your reflection quite a bit throughout the day. Uh, I was surprised when I first did this of like, you know, you think of all the times you're washing your hands in the bathroom or if you're driving to work and you look in the rear view mirror and you catch your reflection or um, just walking by a mirror in your house. There's a lot of times or looking at your phone and you get that quick reflection before the phone screen comes on. So there's a lot of times and a lot of opportunities throughout the day where we have the chance to change and rewire the thoughts that we have the initial reaction and instinct that we have towards ourself and start to create it in a more positive and loving way. And I want to preface this that it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel uncomfortable. The first few times you do it, maybe the first week even or two weeks, you might not believe it because you've spent a lifetime telling the other story. I spent 20 some years telling a story every time I looked in the mirror and that story was why I wasn't good enough, why I was ugly, why I was this, why I was that. And it didn't change in one day of practicing, of one day of mirror work. But it's about creating those habits so that with time it changed. And the exact things that I did was the following. So every time I saw my reflection, I forced myself to smile. And this might sound simple, this might sound silly, but here's why it's so powerful. Because a smile naturally triggers certain things in your body. It also triggers like hormones and stuff being released. When we smile, it immediately brings like an uplifting sense, you know, even if things aren't going well and you take that moment, it's a trigger response in your body. It's something that is very well programmed in your body already, exactly as frowning and scowling is very well programmed in your body in terms of what it releases. So where I would normally look in the mirror and frown and go into the negative track, I said to myself, Kara, you're going to smile. 
every time, even if you have to think of something totally unrelated to yourself, like think of Anchorman (laughs) or think of like Dodgeball or think of like a movie that cracks you up or think of something outside of yourself, a funny memory, funny story, whatever it is, even if you have to take your train of thought away from yourself, but you're putting it and translating it into something positive, you have now shifted your relationship to the mirror, you've shifted your relationship to your reflection, and you're not associating it with judgment and negativity, you're now beginning to associate it with a smile, and with like a little lightness and uplifting energy in your body, maybe a little laughter or something. So it started with that, and then I also at the same time started to like program in, we can say, a new habit of think of one thing you're either grateful for or one thing you like about yourself. This doesn't have to be appearance, but it's ultimately programming in that positive, right? So some days that looked like just being grateful for whatever happened in the morning or thinking of, usually if I was thinking of things I liked about myself, it was just like, I like that I have a big heart and that I care so deeply about people in the world that's kind of all I had because otherwise my story about myself was so negative, so harmful and toxic. And actually what sparked this, and I have other videos about this on my YouTube channel. It's one of the tools I also incorporate into my Thrive program because that program is just like your ultimate toolkit and toolbox of all these different things that helped me throughout my empowerment journey. But I share about a book called The Complaint Free World. And it's so beautiful. It's such a simple concept about catching yourself every time you complain and switching a bracelet to the other arm because you're making the unconscious conscious. Your unconscious uh, habit of complaining, you are catching it And by doing something in the physical, such as switching the bracelet to the other wrist, it's a pattern interrupt. And that's what we need. We have to interrupt the pattern or else the pattern repeats. The pattern loops and the pattern will continue for the rest of your life. So the pattern interrupt could be switching a bracelet to the other side of your wrist, switching a ring to your other hand. Um, one of my friends used to do like slapping the elastic band on her wrist as kind of like the little slap. And then it would be like, okay, let's refresh and put in a positive thought here instead. Sometimes it's like, I mean, it could be anything changing, a putting a coin in one of your pockets (laughs) and like every time you catch yourself, you shift it to the other side. And the goal with a complaint free world was to go 21 days without ever switching that bracelet. So every time you catch yourself complaining, you start back at day one. And for me, I came across this book when I was in Bali. I was doing a month of yoga and literally just like riding a little bicycle through the rice fields (laughs) to my yoga class to go. I went like two or three times a day. And then otherwise I was sitting at my little villa, reading my books, meditating. It was like the most peaceful uh, chapter in my gap year um, of travel. But for me at that time, it wasn't about complaining because I didn't really have that much to complain about. So that pattern wasn't presenting itself too much for me at that time. But the pattern I noticed was my self-talk and the judgments I had towards myself, where every yoga class, I was so in my head, criticizing, comparing, thinking of all the things I wasn't doing good enough, or yeah, like how someone else looked better than me, and you know, my competitive nature, and like university athlete days would come out and be like, I should be the best, or why am I not more flexible, or like mad about this thing, or this injury, or whatever, and the self-talk about my appearance, the insecurity and smallness I felt in how I carried myself, feeling like everyone around me was judging or looking at me with like disgust because that's how I looked at myself. 
And I realized I could take the tools from a complaint-free world with this bracelet, with this pattern interrupt, and use it towards my self-talk. So every time I caught myself thinking something negative or judgmental, like walking <laughs> walking down the street to get my tasty little plant-based meal in Bali and judging myself or criticizing or saying, I'm, like telling myself I'm stupid or I'm this or I'm that. And that was when I would switch the bracelet. And that's what then initiated this whole mirror work practice as well, because I realized I have so many beautiful things around me. I have a very peaceful moment in time in my existence being here in Bali, like eat, pray, loving it, you know, (laughs) and yet I still cannot feel happy and I don't feel at peace within myself. And I had just done all these things off my bucket list. I was about to continue doing things on my bucket list. And I just remember being like, if I can't find happiness here now, I'm never going to be happy. And this is going to be a really brutal existence that I don't want to continue down. So in order to change my self image and change my concept of myself, I had to start doing things differently. And that's where the pattern interrupts became so important. So I remember in my little villa there, standing in front of the mirror after a yoga class one day and breaking down in so much, so uh, so heavy, the crying that was coming out of me because I just realized how much I hated myself. And if you can relate, you know... Um, how challenging that is, right? We are given this body, this vessel to live in, and we're programmed to think everything's wrong with it. And we're programmed to basically despise ourselves. And yet this is our home. You know, we should be loving it. We should be honoring it. We should be seeing it as a temple because it is. It's a temple for the soul to reside in. We should be loving our bodies so much and treating them with so much kindness and respect and choosing pleasure, choosing joy, choosing ease and flow, all the things that it was designed to be, not stuck in the struggle, in the trauma, in the pain, in the heaviness, in the force, in the challenge, in the pain, if I didn't say that already, (laughs) I'll say it again. So I remember just breaking down and being like, I have to change this. Or I don't want to be here. Like, it was one of those moments of this just can't continue the way that it's been. So I stood there crying, staring in the mirror. And that's when I started to apply these different tools. The complaint-free world about shifting to the positive instead of the negative. Uh, My understanding of just human psychology and kind of how the subconscious works and how there are program triggers in us that naturally connect to the subconscious, like the smiling that I mentioned. The second you smile or laugh, your subconscious interprets that you're happy, that you're blissful, that you're safe, that there's something good going on. And so it sends these signals, these messengers or messages, either or, into your body and through your entire system. So by you making that conscious decision to smile instead of frown, You're like changing the physiological nature of your body. And you're allowing something new to be birthed in that place. So you smile when you see your reflection. And you think of something positive about the day, about yourself. You know, you allow that to be a moment of giving yourself a compliment instead of a judgment. And as I started this episode off with, it feels uncomfortable at first until you start to normalize it. And what I find is doing that in the mirror is so helpful because we tend to be very disconnected from our bodies, from our ourselves. You know, we're not sitting looking at ourselves all day. We're in that first person. So when you actually stop and look at yourself, it's, I think, a lot easier to ground in some of these things and actually feel it sit with it. Um, Notice if it makes you uncomfortable. Notice if you don't believe it. 
in which case maybe you need to ease off. Like there is no way when I started out that I could have said, I love this thing about you and that thing's so beautiful and this is perfect and blah, blah, blah. Like my subconscious would not have believed it and my conscious mind wouldn't have believed it. So I needed to start with the baby steps. I needed to start with like, let's just smile and think of something happy. (laughs) And then let's just think of one nice thing or one gratitude. And the more you start to do that, the more you slowly begin to train your brain with those new neural networks. You train those new patterns and it does become a little bit easier. So even after a week of doing that, I noticed that I could look in the mirror and not immediately frown. And now this is like six or seven years later, I think, um, since that first moment in Bali when I started doing more of the mirror work and practicing this. But now it's like I get excited to see my reflection in the mirror because I've trained myself to smile at it and think of something positive. So when I walk by a mirror or in the car, as I mentioned, whatever, it's like, oh, like I smile and I feel good. Even though there's still a million things that my old, old, old programming could say is wrong, or there's a million things I could judge myself for if I wanted to. But it's about training those patterns out and replacing them with the new ones, replacing them with the things that are gonna serve you moving forward. And as you do this, you start to see yourself as a new version of you. This is where the identity shifting comes into play because not only have you just trained yourself to respond differently to your reflection, but as you do that, you start to realize, oh, wait, I actually am so much more than the stories I've been telling myself. I'm so much more than what I've been living in and looping through for ages. And there's so many people very near and dear to me who I know struggle with this. And I know their self-talk is so negative and so full of hatred and judgment. And the identity shift comes from realizing that the version of you that you want to be probably thinks and speaks to themselves very differently than the version of you right now. It's those two selves that I always talk about, the lower self, the higher self, the old programming, the new programming, the fear and hate, or the love and compassion. So you get to decide, do I continue operating in that old identity where I do these things the same way I used to do them, where I continue to tell myself the story that I know doesn't serve me and actually causes me a lot of harm? Or do I tell the story that I would love to tell, that I would love to be thinking Even if I don't fully believe it yet, one day this will be my truth. So I'm going to start saying it now. And I can tell you firsthand that my entire physical appearance actually changed from doing this work because I no longer focused on the negative. I no longer held on to those lower vibrational densities, you know, the heavy emotions, the self judgment. And I started to feel better, smile more create the lightness, the joy, realize I'm worthy and deserving of pleasure and happiness, even if I don't look like I'm perfect, according to all the magazines, all the things that I was shown when I was younger, even if I wasn't enough to my parents in certain ways, or I didn't feel unconditionally loved. I would love to feel unconditionally loved now. So how can I give that to myself? How can I be the change? How can I become that version of me now? And as you do that work, which is why I love the fact that the inner work creates an outer glow up. It's like the bonus that comes from doing the inner work. 
is that when you love yourself, you shine. When you love yourself and you embody that, you show up differently in the world. You hold yourself differently. You dance, you float, you know, you glide <laughs> through your existence. You are embodying a totally different frequency. And I'll get into more the whole epigenetic side of this in terms of like activating DNA and actually rewiring and being able to change on the genetic level, which has been proven through epigenetics. Dr. Bruce Lipton is one of my favorites for that. But the mirror work, the self-talk, bringing in the love and compassion was the stepping stone for me to then create the physical reality, the physical appearance that I wanted. Instead of looking in the mirror and seeing all my flaws, seeing my really bad acne, my teeth, my eyes that I think are too big, all the things that I hated, the problems with my hair, like literally everything on, as I said, every part of my body that I could find judgment to. I wanted to see myself from a new lens before it was there. So I started to think about things from the place of beauty and like what I love about these characteristics and how, you know, my weight stays at a certain amount because my body regulates itself. So no matter what I'm doing or eating or consuming, um, like this is just how my genetics operate. This is how my DNA operates for me. And I started to program things in in an epigenetic way as well. But like I said, I'll talk about that on another time because otherwise this will be extremely long. But it all starts with that self-talk and it all starts with that pattern interrupt. So your homework (laughs) with today's episode, if you've gotten this far with me, is to use the mirror as your greatest teacher right now. Use the mirror as your greatest tool of where I once saw myself and said something negative or said many things that were negative. I'm now going to use this as a an ally to support me in writing the story I want. Seeing myself through the lens of love. Seeing myself as worthy and divinely perfect in my own unique way. And speaking that into existence, speaking that into myself, looking in my eyes and telling myself that I am enough, regardless. And doing that consistently, adding in that smile or that laughter or that positive memory so that you feel uplifted. Because that is what's going to change everything for you. And as I said, it might not happen overnight. Definitely won't happen overnight. It's definitely going to trigger up your insecurities because you're looking at them literally face to face in the mirror. But as you do that and you commit to that, even for one week, I promise you'll start to feel better and you're going to feel a lot more capable of loving yourself. You're going to feel more positive. You're going to start to realize there are things worth celebrating, worth being excited about, worth being proud of. So I'm going to invite you to do that. And as always, there are incredible resources inside my courses, as well as with the hypnosis work that I teach, that I have these recordings to guide you through to change this on the subconscious level. But if you're not ready for that, start with this. And it's already going to bring huge, huge shifts into your life. And you deserve that. You deserve to love all that you are because you can only amplify and radiate out even more when you feel that love from within. So it benefits you, it benefits everyone around you, benefits all that you're here to share with the world. And as I said, you're worthy of feeling that. You're worthy of enjoying who you are in the temple that you get to reside in in this lifetime. So give it a go and I will talk to you very soon. And I'm sending all my love.